the last tutorial for developers based on the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in part two of our tutorial, Debugging and Optimization, with a brief introduction to optimizing procedures, compare procedures to complex selects, take a look at triggers, and using procedures to create or drop triggers. Optimizing procedures. Procedure operations are planned on prepare, which means that the index plan is created upon the first prepare. When working with huge amounts of data, it is critical that you write it, rewrite it, look at each of the SQLs in it, and break it down to ensure that it is optimally set up. A major contributing factor to the performance and efficiency of procedures are indices. The subject of indices is an extensive subject, which has been covered in detail in our online documentation. Also, take into consideration the use of operators, such as like and containing, as well as the use of strings, such as percent string percent, as none of these can use indices. Let's look at an example in the demo database, DB1, using the like operator. Select star from product where actor like humor. Here it doesn't find any result sets because like requires wildcards. Select star from product where actor like humor percent gives us all those sets starting with humor. If we go through to the last data set and take a look at the performance analysis, you can see that the server has performed 56 indexed reads. This is because it's used the index product actor index on the actor field. If Yuma could be the second or third actor in the field list, select star from product where actor like percent Yuma percent and execute again. The performance analysis shows us that it has scanned the complete table. The question is, of course, when I have a statement like this in this constellation and say, for example, select star from product where actor like parameter name, I've now set a parameter and enter the name Yuma. The moment I let it run over parameter, the optimizer should now be able to determine the index plan using the prepare command. Problem is though, it doesn't know what might be entered as a parameter. So it assumes the worst case scenario that the parameter, for example, could be entered with a wildcard at the beginning. Now the server has had to perform 10,000 non-index reads to fetch 95 records, rather more than the 60 reads for the 60 resulting records in the last example. So if you can, use starting with instead of like or containing. Check each procedure operation individually and remove bottlenecks. Use the debugger and the SP triggers views analyzer. Check the index plans not forgetting to recompute the selectivity of your indices regularly. Check for indices on columns used in WHERE and JOIN clauses. Use the plan analyzer and performance analysis to help you compare and improve your more complex procedures. Another consideration with extremely complex procedures is to postpone the suspend. If you have a suspend on every data row on a report that may be returning thousands of rows of calculated results, it will slow your system. If you wish to have an element of control over it, then put your suspend every 100 or 1000 rows. This way, the database server fills a buffer and sends the results back in the specified quantity. It makes it more manageable and you can stop it at any time should it congest your system too much. As you can see, careful definition of your procedure can bring huge performance advantages. Procedures or complex selects. Selectable procedures can sometimes offer higher performance than complex selects. The more complicated a procedure is, the more important it is to carefully prepare and test your procedure in this way. For example, here I have a procedure with an outer select and the category is fetched in an inner select. This simple example is mimicking a join. You have a procedure here which is going to return a title and some text. First, it goes through all the products, selecting the relevant titles. 
This outer select is, however, only providing one of the output fields. So another select is nested within the procedure, providing the information for the second output field, CID. Although some developers feel there's no reason to construct procedures in this way, ever so often you will find that the optimizer really has a problem with a certain join because it takes too long for it to work out how to approach the query. Breaking things down like this can actually often provide a more immediate response. Triggers and their function. A trigger, on the other hand, is a special table or database bound procedure that is started automatically. After creating your database and constructing your table structure, you need to get your triggers sorted. Triggers are extremely powerful, the so-called police force of the database. They ensure database integrity because you just can't get round them. You, the developer, tell the system how to invoke them and whether they should react to an insert, update or delete. And once we're there in a table inserting, updating or deleting, it's impossible not to execute them. You can specify whether your trigger should fire on an insert or an update or a delete or on all three actions using a universal trigger. Comprehensive details concerning triggers, how to create them, the different types and variables can be found in the IB Expert documentation chapter, Trigger. But don't put all your logic into one trigger, build up layers of them. For example, one for generating the primary key, one for logging or replication, one for passing on information of the data manipulation to another table, etc. The order in which such a series of triggers is executed can be important. For example, the before insert logging trigger needs to know the primary key. So the before insert primary key trigger needs to be fired first. The firing position is user defined, beginning with zero. You can read more about this in trigger position in our online documentation. Here's a simple example of an auto-increment trigger. It creates a generator. Create or alter. Yes, this also works for triggers. Active, before insert, position zero. I can define the trigger position in relation to other before insert triggers. Then it checks if the new value is null. That is, nothing has been entered. And if this is the case, it inserts a generator value. New and old variables in a trigger. Let's take a look at a trigger, such as, for example, the VW customer view, here before update. In the view, we have a trigger, and in the update view, I can access new.firstname, what is in my first name variable, in the first name field after the update. That means I redirect the update command and simply say, do this for the entry in the customer table, where ID equals old ID. So if I alter the ID, it would have the new ID value here. Set ID equals new ID. And using this new ID, it knows that the old ID value was the previous ID. That's the idea behind new and old variables, as these table triggers always stick to a table. Using the old and new values, you can easily create history records, calculate the amount or percentage of change in a numeric value, Find records in another table that match either the old or new value, or do pretty well anything else you can think of. Common sense says that insert triggers only have new values. Updates will have new and old, and delete triggers will only have old values. Please note that new variables can be modified in a before trigger. Since the introduction of Fiber 2.0, it is not so easy to alter them in an after trigger. Old variables cannot be modified, and it is possible to read or write from these trigger variables. Universal triggers. Here I can say active, before insert or update or delete. And then there are some variables, if inserting then, etc. I can create global triggers on all three operations, which is very practical. If we were going to create one of those in the IB Expert trigger editor, you simply select before, for example, and then check the insert, update and delete boxes. Then you can define, if inserting something, then do something. If updating something, do another thing. And if deleting something, do something else. Using procedures to create triggers. Here is an example, which, if of interest, you can pause the screen and take a closer look at. This is a simple procedure 
that generates auto increment triggers. It uses all table names. All tables are stored in the system table RDB dollar relations. Excludes system tables and generates for each table a before insert trigger and executes this using execute statement, which adds an auto increment ID. And here a small tip. When any, that is if something already exists under that name or does something else, it triggers an exception. The next procedure then drops the trigger. As you gain experience, you'll become aware that there is a variety of possible solutions for every problem. So, that was our introduction to debugging and optimization. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IB Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next tutorial series for DB Admins. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.